I want you guys to hear how high a level this is, that instead of actually taking something, getting to a level where you can adjust your brain to produce that DMT and alter that melatonin by itself, that is insane. That is insane. Now, um, a better way to say this is when your pineal gland is activated, it's like you're getting a clearer picture. The higher the frequency, the more heightened your experiences will feel. It's like you've gone from a picture of a 1960s television screen to a 360-degree IMAX 3D experience complete with surround sound at a cinema. Everything is amplified. Everything is more. You will hear the first thing client said is that, oh my God, my dreams are so vivid. My dreams are so clear. And this is not the only one. Others as well, they're like, oh my God, my dreams are so vivid. My, there's color. I'm seeing color. I've never seen color in my dreams. I'm feeling more. Why? Melatonin. Melatonin, the dreaming um, neurotransmitter, right? The more heightened it is, it's like it activates your pineal gland. And therefore, it's like you are getting that 360 degree IMAX 3D experience at some cinema somewhere. That melatonin, it evolves into a powerfully lucid neurotransmitter that makes our dreams more real. Let me repeat that. Melatonin evolves into a more powerfully lucid neurotransmitter that makes our dreams more real. You hear that? So meaning that it's responsible for those chemicals that influence the glands and hormones that make it so that the experience is tangible. And it's, whew, yeah. Yeah, if you guys are not hearing this, I shame. <laughs> yo, 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 wild, 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 wild. Um, okay, let's move along. Let's move along. Um, Gonjo, what was I looking for here? Uh, uh, the activated activating the pineal gland meant they could enter the other world or other dimensions. The brain has two hemispheres. If you divided them into half by slicing the brain down the middle, you would perform what is known as a surgical cut. When looking at the surgical cut, uh, pay particular attention to the location and information of the pineal gland. You will see the thalamus, hypothalamus, pituitary, and corpus callosum. Uh, this signifies protection, power, and good health. It's the ancient Egyptian symbol called the Eye of Horus. The ancient Egyptian symbol called the Eye of Horus. It's very possible that um, there was ancient teachings about the autonomic nervous system, which is the reticular activating system, the thalamic gate, and the pineal gland. The Egyptians must have known the significance of the autonomic nervous system and realized that activating the pineal gland meant they could enter the other world and the other dimensions. That's exactly what client has experienced here in two ways. Number one, got closer to um, their guidance system. Um, number three, they are able to move their awareness around through their their dreams. Yo, superimpose, superimposition. So we have spoken about that. Now we want to move into dream alchemy. Dream alchemy. I've always been so lucky in that I always get the right books at the right time. And because I remember when I read Ted, uh, Ted Andrews' uh, uh, Dream Alchemy book, which is about shaping our dreams to transform our lives, I was like, whoa, this is wild. I didn't understand it. I wasn't hearing anything there, but I still held on to it. And the information is only landing now. All right, the information is only landing now. Okay, here's so much shapeshifters, shapeshifters, mysteries of sleep. I'm going to page through. Yeah. So uh, he goes on in the first chapter saying, what are dreams? Uh, he explains that dreams are a reality separate from our waking consciousness. Uh, the images shift and change scenarios, um, altering in seemingly disconnected manners. Uh, dreams have been defined in many ways by many people. They have been called manifestations of images and sounds. They have been linked, likened to a mirror of our life, conscious and unconscious. Okay, wait, before I go on with that, so let's just summarize the first part that we did. So the first part that we did, we spoke about the pineal gland, right? When you're moving energy from the base to the pineal gland, what is that? The pineal gland, the place where you are then releasing serotonin, which keeps you awake, it wakes you up in the day. Melatonin, it helps you fall asleep. And if you alter melatonin, the more you alter it, eventually you get to DMT, uh, which is then what helps you go into trance. And then you're having all these mystical um, experiencing experiences and you're traveling to other worlds. All right. So the whole point of, 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 of altering that speaks about what is it? What does it mean when your pineal gland is activated? What does it mean? What is it? And how does it feel? OK, so now what are dreams? Dreams are a reality separate from our waking lives. 
Um, you know, dreams have been uh, defined in many ways by many people. They've been called manifestations of images and sounds. They've been likened to a mirror of our life, conscious and unconscious. They have been called creations of the night. They mystify and perplex, but they unite us all. Uh, for it is the one experience we all share with the rich or poor, mighty, weak, male, female, earthly or spiritual. We all dream. Um, every night we fall asleep. Uh, the subtle bodies work with the physical functions and energies. The astral, one of the subtle bodies, is most active during altered states of awareness, especially sleep. When we lie down to sleep, the subtle bodies exteriorize themselves from the physical. This exteriorizing serves several purposes. It enables the energy debris and tension accumulated during the day to be shaken free from the energy fibers of our essence. So, dreams, they enable physical the physical body to relax and re-energize itself. Uh, it provides opportunities to connect with teachings and activities on other dimensions uh, without the encumbrance of the physical body. The subtle bodies can draw energy directly from the universe. So now, just so that you're understanding, what does it mean when people are saying, okay, uh, in my dreams, like I'm going to be initiated in my dreams, I'm going to be initiated underwater. What does that mean? It means that within your dream states, you can travel, like you're no longer inside of your physical body. You are able to travel to other worlds. So this, the astral is one of the subtle bodies. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six of them. You have an astral subtle body, you have a mental subtle body, you have a buddhic subtle body, you have an atomic subtle body, you have a nomad subtle body, you have a divine subtle body. So when clientele was saying, oh goodness, I was there and it's like I could hear the conversations my ancestral guides were saying. I could hear everything that they were saying and they were so angry and you know they were retaliating um, on my behalf and all of that. When a person is getting initiated in Manzini in water, which is the astral field, it does not always mean physically underwater. When they speak of water, they speak about the dream state. The dream state, the astral field is a water field. It is a water field because it provides opportunities to connect with teachings and activities in other dimensions. So through the astral, you can travel, you can jump from one dimension to another one. The same way that this client did here, not only did they go into their pantheon where they are hearing these discussions that his ancestral guides are having um, and he, listening into all of that, but also traveled physically to a time where a conversation was being had about him. And when he phoned in the morning, all the information was correct. And he said, oh, I feel like an oracle. I feel like I'm seeing the future right now. Right. He traveled. He traveled through awareness, through consciousness. It's like being a fly on the wall. You are traveling in your brain. You entered the brain of another person who's there and you saw everything that they saw. Spirit technology. Spirit technology. So now, with that type of thing, there are a lot of um, traditional healers that won't understand that. They'll say, but how do you get initiated in your dreams? Who's going to beat your drum for you? Who's going to... Those people don't understand anything about spirituality. People who say things like that don't understand spirituality because they are so fixated on the physical. They are so fixated on the physical. You're talking about drums? Drums, bro? Drums? Who's going to beat the drums for you? Who's going to uh, 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 do this and that? Who's... Come on now. Like, when you are dealing with spirituality, you're not dealing with, dealing with those dumbass drums anyway. You are dealing with spirit. What's happening energetically? What's going on in the other dimensions? Other dimensions not seen with the physical eyes. So if you're going in there and you're just worried about, oh, I need a gobella to beat drums for me. Listen, you're going to fail miserably because clearly it's not about energy. Look, I'm working mobile. Some of these clients are people that I've never met face to face. But the work is still being done. How is it being done? Because when we do these sessions, we're entering other dimensions. And it's important for me not to be able to see the person physically because I can't even typecast them. I don't know them. They are hearing my voice. I'm hearing their voice because I'm tapping into their spirit. I'm tapping into their minds. That has nothing to do with their physical bodies. Me working how I work right now would be impossible. Under the mentalities of those people, oh, you need a drum. Oh, you need a this. You don't need Jack. You don't need Jack, Jack. When you're really dealing with uh, dimensions and spirit and energy because it's not about what's physically there. It's not about the physical skin and bone person. Because if that was the case, then I would not be able to be doing this and, and, and working this way and getting testimonials such as this where this person has not, it's not like they're doing anything extreme. We're going to talk about Gotukala right now and Gotukala is the, 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 the powdered green tea that they are talking about. We're going to talk about that so that you can see how it then enhances. In fact, let's talk about it now because now I think I might forget coming back to it. I might forget coming back to it. So yeah, Gotukala, which is uh, that green, the green tea tea capsule tablet that uh, he takes at night. So this is called, um, uh, the botanical for it is Sentinella. 
Uh, the botanical for it is Centella asiatica. It's the herb of longevity. It calms the nerves. It sharpens focus. Uh, it's also called Brahmi. In Ayurveda, Brahmi means universal consciousness or godlike. So it promotes mental health, longevity, vitality of the body and mind. So it heals skin issues, increases brain function, is an antidepressant, is an antioxidant. Uh, it has treated mood uh, disorders, enhances memory, reduces anxiety. Uh, it plays a role in treating depression, insomnia, and chronic fatigue. So the herb uh, harmonizes mind, body, and spirit, right? Providing a result, uh, results pursued through mindfulness and meditation processes. That just means that the results that you get from from that from taking that 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 herb is the same result that is pursued by people who do meditation mindfulness processes and meditation processes we are all doing those things to harmonize the mind and the body but there is a herb that you can take that does that as you go to sleep so now because things are so orderly your spirit is also orderly right so um the science-based advantages for the brain and the nervous system so the, that plant is considered a nervine a nervine so it's used for calming the nerves it enhances memory by blue by by boosting blood circulation to the brain, right? Uh, the way in which it enhances memory, it, it, it boosts blood circulation to the brain, improving cognitive function. Um, Gotukala is an adeptogenic that has an effect on both the nervous system and the brain. Um, you, so what you end up getting is you start getting unhindered energy flow. It opens up the crown chakra, also known as Sahasrara, uh, allows physical and spiritual health to flow in. So uh, the more common ways to open Sahasrara is through yoga, meditation, affirmations, mantra chanting, and plant-based um, eating. So that's the Gotukala that he's then taking at night. Um, and then the two, the colon immune booster, right? That is an immune booster. It stimulates, uh, it stimulates the nervous system. So just to summarize, uh, Brahmi, which is Gotukala, that's the green tablet. It improves memory by increasing blood circulation to the brain, helps with stress, nervous ex exhaustion, uh, and, and neurotic disturbances. It supports the central nervous system, helps for, helps people, helpful, for people with ADD or HD, ADHD, as it stimulates the brain, increasing one's ability to focus. Uh, it has a soothing effect on an overactive nervous system. So it's good for connective tissue, lymph tissue, blood vessels, and mucous membranes. So it develops the crown chakra, a portal for the very top of the head. It balances the right and the left hemispheres of the brain. It boosts brain power. It improves memory and it enhances nerve function, reducing anxiety and stress. So it's a natural antidepressant known to treat and decrease stress, anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Yeah, so that basically is what he is then taking in terms of that part of, of his uh, 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 review where he says, oh, I can't wait to pop my, my, my green tea capsule and go to bed. This is what's going on. Um, right. Where were we? Where were we? Yeah, so dream alchemy. Yeah, so let's talk about that um, incarnation process that is then going to help, you know, uh, develop a proper understanding of the subtle bodies because there's more than one. So the subtle bodies surround and interpenetrate the physical. They enable us to contact other dimensions, other planes and energies while awake or asleep. So you see what client did is they contacted other dimensions and other planes in two ways. So our true essence shows its vibrational intensity through stages. So as to be able to integrate with the physical vehicle without burning it up. These stages are the subtle bodies. These are bands of energy that it molds around it. So as to more fully integrate with the developing physical body. The consciousness does connect with the physical from the moment of conception, but in increasing intensity. So the first subtle body, that is the astral subtle body, the mental subtle body, the buddhic subtle body, the atmic uh, subtle body, the nomad uh, subtle body, and then the divine subtle body. Yeah, uh, there are ex exercises and breathwork meditations that develop the ability to extend the consciousness or to extend awareness beyond physical dimensions, right? Um we use those exercises to stretch and strengthen our muscles, right? Uh, preventing from imbalances. So it is the same with dream alchemy. There are exercises to loosen and stretch our energies and develop the ability to extend uh, the consciousness to those more subtle realms with greater control um, and awareness. Yeah. So dream alchemy, it is the language of the subconscious mind. Symbols are the only way the subconscious mind uses to communicate with the conscious aspect of ourselves. Um, you see the conscious mind symbols, subconscious symbols form the bridge between the subconscious mind and the unconscious. 
when we focus upon an image, sound, or a color, it stimulates a response on some level in the subconscious mind. This in turn elicits insights and understanding, which can be brought out to the conscious mind, empowering it and expanding its influence in our life experience. So this is when things like tarot come in, because you see tarot is a, is a, is a game of symbols, right? You're working with um, symbols, which then form that universal bridge between both aspects of the self. <sighs> Translate them into imagery. Yeah. So, yeah, our dreams are gifts to help us grow and change to evolve to our highest potential. Um, as we clean out the debris, greater creativity emerges. Right, as above, so below. Now we move on to mythic dream work, dream alchemy. Uh, one of the best ways of furthering the educational process with dreams is through the study and use of myths, tales, and legends. Like dreams, they manifest images and scenarios which show uncommon relationships. They reflect aspects of our lives, conscious or unconscious. They put us in touch with realities and dimensions of life that we do not consciously acknowledge. Both myths and dreams touch the core of humanity. They touch those aspects of ourselves that are ultimate and universal. They are timeless, reflecting a flow of the past, present and future simultaneously. They are replete with symbolism and linking universal archetypes to everyday consciousness. Our inner self knows us and how we operate in all arenas of life. Our dreams come to us through the subconscious mind. It is the bridge between the conscious and the archetypal energies playing within our life. The subconscious mind serves as a translator of those energies to conscious awareness through dreams. Through a directed form of meditation and guided imagery, we can consciously send messages to the subconscious so that it will access, elaborate, and clarify the archetype energies in our lives. Through mythic dream work, we learn to work consciously with the subconscious mind. So you're seeing here communication with universal mind, right? The conscious mind communicates to the other mind using symbols and images. The other mind picks it up, passes it on to the universal mind. Uh, and then the archetypal responds accordingly, releasing specific waves and signals out um, that then help match you up with what it is that you are either asking for or that's why when people will do things like love lists, they'll do the love list. And then very soon after, a person who matches everything in that love list will come into their experience. Uh, it is that universal mind that matched you up with what you're asking for. All right. Now, let's talk about the benefits of dream work. Using myths as catalysts for dream activity serves as a variety of purposes. Um, using myths as catalysts for dream activities serves a few purposes predominantly among them is it elaborates on the content of previous dreams or even specific situations. Um, some, some individuals will say, I wish I could go back into that dream and find out more about what it meant. Through mythic dream work, you can stimulate a dream or a whole series of dreams that re-express the content of the original scenario, giving you more to work with and facilitating understanding. That's what client did where, you know, they are having the same, they can have the same dream over and over again. They can test it out with something else. They can play around with this. So you can use mythic dream work to stimulate revelations um, about specific aspects or qualities operating in your life. Um, so to elicit dreams that reveal where greed or carelessness might be operating or, you know, for educational purposes, you know, if there's something you want to learn, something you want to tap into, uh, you can also use myths and tales to reveal where your energies are blocked. This will trigger dreams that reveal the restrictions in your own life that must be overcome, or it uh, can help you clarify those restricting situations. Um, yeah, so this type of dream uh, work, it stimulates the unconscious intuition so that inspiration can manifest through dream energies, right? So it increases that dream activity in general. Yeah, so we begin the ability to shape the course of the dream while we are in it because lucid dreaming is a dynamic prelude to controlled out-of-body experiences. So when you're lucid dreaming, it's like having uh, a first level or, you know, out-of-body experience light. Mm -hmm. um, so this is part of what we are invoking through dream alchemy processes. You know, um, in the path of uh, doing or working with dreams, you have greater opportunity to clear the subconscious of limitations and restrictions, self-imposed self or otherwise. This is a good aspect to tackle and go into because there are people that struggle with, okay, fine, I understand I have limiting beliefs and there are all of these things that I've picked up and how do I clear them up, right? Dream alchemy can help you go into the subconscious, clear those limitations and restrictions up. And I think there's an explanation or, a, or an example of that. I'm going to keep reading through this. I saw it earlier. Uh, yeah, so some case histories, case studies that Ted, uh, Ted Andrews had with clearing this up. He says, uh, by looking at two case histories, we can see how individuals have benefited from using mythic dream work processes. Um, 
Case History 1, Mythic Dream Work for Insight into Abundance. In this case, we have an individual who is in his late 30s. He has been trying to establish new areas of abundance and prosperity in his life. He would get so far and then the money flow would just stop. He was planning on initiating a new business but was concerned about the best way to break down barriers that could prevent its success. Uh, because he wanted to uh, establish greater abundance, this man used uh, the tale of King Midas to open insight as to the best things to avoid. Um, so yeah, the dream stimulated, they basically showed um, him and when he was younger. Uh, he had arrived late. I just want to read through the whole thing. And then he's like, the last thing he saw was the despair on their faces, his father and the siblings. I had crushed their illusions. I woke up crying. So that's the dream that got stimulated. Insights and impressions. This man remembered as he described his dream, a time in childhood in which he had wanted to chip in to buy a Christmas present for his parents. Usually the brothers pooled their money together, but this time the others in the family had decided to make their purchase separately rather than as a group. At the time, he was only about nine years old and had very little money of his own, not enough to buy any present by himself. He said he had felt so left out and so bad about not getting a present that it was one of the worst Christmases he had ever had, and no one had even noticed or seemed to care. As he talked, he began to clarify some old emotions and ideas about abundance. He saw a lot of his abundance tied up in relation to his family and saw a conflict between having money and how it would appear to others in his family. He wanted to have more than anyone else in the family. He felt that being prosperous would make the others feel less successful. Part of him wanted that to happen, while another part didn't. There was that part of him that did not want to make the others feel poor because of how he remembered feeling when he had no money to buy a present as a child. Because he was pulled, he saw why his earlier business ventures would only succeed to a point and then hit a limbo period. There was also an issue in regards to spirituality and money. A part of him felt that he could not be spiritual and have money as well. This was reflected in the setting of the dream. He entered what he thought was his house only to find himself in a church. His family had been very religious and had very little money. Um, so then we started to explore that seeing wealth and family and prosperity as not being mutually exclusive, you know, where belief such as the root of all evil is money or money is the root of all evil. We began to discuss ways of being and dealing with success without taking the responsibility for, for how others respond to it as well, particularly by not taking ownership of the guilt placed upon him for succeeding, whether placed upon him by himself or by others. Uh, so you see how that then allowed him to, because there are so many beliefs that we have running, but they are subconscious, you know, we are not aware of them. You know, they are, they are existing there subconsciously and we don't know that, oh, this is the barrier. This is the barrier until they come to the surface. So dreams can help you pull things out of your subconscious mind to see that where does this pattern come from? Where does that pattern come from? Where does this pattern come from? So mythic dream work definitely helps you do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think that's all we're, we're going to cover today. A mandala. A mandala is a visual doorway between two worlds, a tool for focusing and concentrating the mind in order to pass through the usual blocks and fetters. In Eastern philosophy, they are known as yantras. In the Native American tradition, they are known as medicine shields. They can be a mixture of associated symbolic pictures or they can be a series of geometric patterns designed to elicit a specific effect. A mandala holds the essence of a specific thought or concept and it is designed to draw our consciousness more fully into that concept it is a vehicle for bringing us to the center of our universe or to uh, the center of some aspect in it. A mandala stimulates the inner creative forces in a manner peculiar to its design. Yeah. Dream mandalas are designed to stimulate specific dream activities when placed within the dream temple of your bedroom. So the dream temple, Kim Samo, that is Um Samo. This is your altar, your prayer altar. That's your prayer altar. So yeah, so with this being said, dreams are an, an important part of the subconscious mind. They give you a peek into what's happening in your own psyche, into your own subconscious mind. Like the this other client who said, oh, I went to a mirror healer. And when I got there, I took this concoction that helps me go into a trance, right? It puts the, the thinking brain to sleep so that the subconscious can, can, you know, can come up. And then in that conversation, you are then seeing that, okay, so DMT, it's that thing that helps you to have those, you know, paranormal to journey to trap to paranormal realms, you know, where you're seeing visions and you are having encounters with spiritual beings and other mystical interdimensional realities. It's part of activating the third eye because um, another lady yesterday was like, hey, but is, is ayahuasca really safe, guys? Like, what if, you know, you open up your third eye and then you don't like what you see? All right. 
Uh, so let's go deeper into exactly what the pineal gland is as a transducer. And then we continue. We will uh, continue with the conversation. Yes. Um, when these chemicals are released in the brain, the mind has experiences that appear more real than anything that a person has ever encountered in their sensory-based reality. This new dimension is difficult to articulate with language. The novel experience that results will occur as a complete um, unknown. And if you surrender to it, it's always worth it. So that's what client went through there, uh, you know, with their, with their experience, like um, uh, the heightening of the sensitivities. Now, um, Activating the pineal gland, it allows us to experience a broader spectrum of reality. When the pineal gland becomes activated, uh, you become fully connected with the unified field. What does that mean? This particular client who was able to jump from their awareness into the awareness of the other person, that was being connected with the unified field. You are no longer restricted to your own body and your own mind. Um, when the other post we made saying that the psychics on crime and investigation channels who can jump, go from their awareness to the awareness of the murdered child or the murdered victim so that they can get information about what happened leading up to the death of that person. It helps them to close cases and to figure out, you know, the evidence and put all the puzzle pieces together. That is evidence that you are fully connected to the unified field, right? You, you can jump into, go into any awareness, any mind. You can even be in rooms with your guidance. You're no longer just in the physical realm as well. That's what it means. Remember, we are doing all of this and we're sharing all of this information so that we can demystify what it actually means to activate your third eye because there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of mis misinformation, even with things like hallucino um, hallucinogenics. There are many healers, uh, you know, people like Roms in them, who, you know, they'll go around saying stuff like, hey, uh, hallucinogenics, people put... Um, hallucinogenics inside of a uh, ukuru, which is like that that thing the traditional healers put um, to 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 remedy um, people that come in. But you must understand what the work of that is. It's not something that's like a drug that's meant to help you see things that aren't real. It's it helps you to move out of your mind, right? But anyway, let's carry on with this. When the pineal gland becomes activated, you can fully connect with the unified field. Your whole body becomes filled with energy and light. You, you know, beginning from the cosmic field, energy from far beyond your senses enters through the top of your head and travels down throughout your whole body. When this occurs, you experience um, downloadable information beyond your memory base, right? All the predictable knowns of your daily life, like how clients knew exactly what was said about them. And when they call this other person, it's like, oh my God, yes, I only said that because of this and that. You go, you get defensive and whatnot. He found that information, you see, traveling through minds, traveling through awareness, he wasn't in that room, but he got that information. So that is experiencing downloadable information beyond their memory base. Because it's not in his memory. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. And it all begins with the chemical alteration of melatonin in the pineal gland. So Dr. Joe says, in all of my research about the gland, I've evolved my own understanding of it into the following um, dis uh, definition. That that gland is a crystalline superconductor that sends as well as receives information um, about energy and vibrational signals, frequencies beyond the senses. It translates it into biological tissue in the form of imagery um, um, so that we can understand it. Now, when the pineal gland is activated, because you now have this tiny antenna in your brain, the higher the frequency it picks up, the more energy it exerts towards altering and transmuting the chemistry of melatonin, meaning that now you can alter that melatonin more. You can produce penolines in your body, which are natural antioxidants. You can release benzos into your body. You can release that hibernating, you know, chemical. You can release phosphorus. You can release DMT, you know, and you're going now into trance or you are then can look into a glass or a wall or a window and then you can see, like, do you guys see how high a level this is? If you guys like these and you want to hear more of these, please subscribe, drop a comment and let us know and holler us with your thoughts and we'll be back with more. So what's name? It is the truth, Coco. Like, I'm such a magnet. And we are in because I need to get you a nice, expensive bottle of red wine. I know how you like your red wine. I, I don't know if I, I'm going to take you to a spa or take you to a game reserve. Or I just want, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to a wine or something. I, I just, I don't know. I, I honestly, I just, I don't know. I, Togo Zanibandla. <laughs> now the funny part <laughs> with um <laughs> with the meditation 
it is so difficult like it is so difficult i do not know why i'm finding it so difficult it is so difficult i mean i'm coming from an environment that i'm coming from a diving environment so i'm used to holding my breath and holding my tummy in i well i hold my stomach in gym most of my life okay but i have to breathe in hold it it's the squeezing part i find myself shaking and vibrating and I, I can just hold for five seconds and i'm breathing out and i'm laughing and i'm like yo if you were here you'd be so disappointed <laughs> But I'm going to keep practicing. I'm sure I'll get it right as time goes on. I'm even struggling to picture um, all of it. And they're so excited to see you. And this is a child that I hardly see. I don't, I think since I moved La, I've seen him once. Actually, I have literally seen him once. And this time he jumped onto me and his mother says, my friend says, he's never even jumped to her partner, the boyfriend. He's never, he doesn't even sit where he sits. He just goes out. But for me, he was so excited, he jumped. And then my, my, my Mbamba, he's just touching my face and my neck and he's grabbing my face with both hands and he's putting his face in front of mine and he's looking at it with such, I don't know, oh, that was, that was like nothing else. And it's not just him. Everywhere I go, you know, I get to a shop, I'm called on this till, like specifically, I'm called on this till. And they're like, no, you can pay here because you've got smaller items. I don't have no small items. I've got more than 10 items. I'm getting discounts. Um, the other day, I went to the salon and I didn't pay what I wanted that I couldn't do. But when he did it, and by Angrena, because I tend to, well, I've done it once whereby somebody's done my hair and I didn't like it. I just told them, no, just take it off. Just take it off. I paid for it. And then I came back the next day when my original um, hairstylist was there. So I had Danny hairstyle, just a normal hairstyle, G, just a normal snoop on this one girl because my hairstylist wasn't there. Hey, what she did, nothing to do. My sister, uh, it's a false. It's not what I want. Uh, she was so disappointed. She, yo, I ruined that girl's week. I paid her her money, obviously, um, which I heard, which nobody pays money there once over dissatisfied about the service. But I mean, I, I, I paid. And then this was a couple of months back. I paid and then I even gave her a tip. You know, I just said, actually, the following day I came back. So I just said, she must just stop. Last week, Friday, I went for a different hairstyle. My stylist is gone from that salon. So everybody is frightened to touch my hair now. Like I've been there after my stylist is, has left. And I've only found one person that did my hair. Like I was, I was happy. But... Yesterday, still, every, well, I mean, Friday, everybody was skeptical of taking me. And, you know, I'm known as one of those clients. And all these things. This guy did my hair. And um, the manager was charging 350 for it. When he was done, he said, I, because he did a great job. He, he honestly did an amazing job. Um, I paid his money. And then I gave him a tip, like a hundred rands tip. And then the manager is like, no, 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 no. Uh, we'll just take photos instead. And then my money came back. So I just gave to the stylist, the whole 350, I just gave to the stylist, plus 100 rands tip. So Jay, no, I'm having no 450 on Friday. I, today, I go, like every day, I'm, every day, Jay, I think if, if Kung and Zegi is something that is just celestial to me,